in different ways. The southwest Marguerite flows from Lake Ainsley and across the soft bedrock of limestone and gypsum. As a result, the channel is well defined and the flatlands that line the banks are more fertile than the northeast branch. There are settlements here. Farms and small wood lots are sprinkled through the valley. These are communities that can trace their roots back 200 years. And the river remains central to a way of life that has endured for generations. It's a unique and special relationship. The real basis to the Marguerite being so significant is because it's a free-flowing river that has all its ecological constituents and components still in place. And at the same time, it's been settled for over 200 years. So you have this blend of natural functioning river system plus traditional uses that the people of Marguerite have benefited from and, are, and look after as stewards of the river. So that combination uh, is, is really makes it significant. Different cultures have coexisted on the banks of the Marguerite since the mid-1700s. The first wave of settlers was the Acadians. Many Acadians still remain here, including the descendants of the legendary Henriette Lejeune. She was the first white woman to settle in the region and is known locally as Granny Ross. Her family came to Nova Scotia and uh, from the United States and settled in the Wolfville area and uh, when the expulsion of the Acadians took place, uh, her family were shipped back to France. And it was some years later that she came back. And uh, she was the first white woman here in Marguerite. And uh, it's said that she brought the smallpox vaccine with her from France, and she administered it to the local people. Carl Ross is a direct descendant of Granny Ross. He still farms the land that has been in his family since the early 1800s. The very first Ross that moved to Marigree uh, was James Ross, and uh, he moved here, brought his family here in 1800. And uh, the following year, his uh, uh, one brother came, and the year after that, two more brothers came. And uh, altogether, they had about 1,400 acres. And uh, it's still, there's one of those original farms still in the Ross family name. So we are related to the first settler and also uh, the first settler on this property. And it has remained in our family since 1828. My house was built by my uh, great-grandfather, Donald Ross, in uh, the early 1870s. It gives you uh, a sense of belonging. Uh, you uh, know from your family history and that uh, your family has been here for a long time. So every, uh, every stone uh, that you find in a stone pile, you, you can relate that that was one of your uh, forefathers that placed that there, picked it off the land as uh, they cleared the land. It's an area that belongs to your family.
recreational fishing has been a tradition on the Marguerite River almost as long as farming. Enthusiastic anglers have been casting their lures into these waters since 1865. Fly fishing is not just a pastime here, it's a passion. Atlantic salmon fishing is about 98% boredom. When you hook that one big fish, it's 2% of pure terror. It's excitement, it's adrenaline. Um, it's like tying into a torpedo or a motorboat, and you have to try and bring the, bring the beast to heel, if you will, bring it in, release it in good shape, and let it go. There's you, the river, the fish, the wind, there's solitude, there's serenity, peace, quiet, communing with nature. And it's, uh, I think it's enjoying life the way it was intended. You can get very philosophical about it. The Marguerite provides a perfect backdrop to the possibility of philosophical musings. There's inspiration in the beauty of the river and the valley beyond. of the Marguerite meets the southwest branch at a place known as Marguerite Forks. From there the river becomes a united flow, working its way through a broad valley and out to the sea. The land here is rich and fertile, and the valley is checkered by farms. South of the river is the community of Marguerite Harbor, an early settlement built on dreams that never came true. Streets were laid out and house lots were sold as part of an ambitious plan to build a shipping and commercial hub. Instead, it became a small fishing village and a haven for artists. Marguerite meets the sea in a clearly defined transition of currents and color. From its protected harbor, the fresh water of the Marguerite is quickly swallowed up by the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Because of its rich nap.